this episode, it's time for a new camera. I'm offended. Well, this is officially rubbish. This is tomorrow. It's worse. All right, so this is, uh, what, how many megapixels did you say? Two? Yeah, this was recommended. It does look a bit silly at the moment, but don't, don't worry, we're, we're gonna fix that. Who would have thought that just trying to get a few boring sand patterns would be the most difficult shoot of my entire career? Is that what I'm smelling right now? So I'm just gonna get my camera out and get stuck in. Which camera? Hey, that last video kind of blew up. You know, the one with the, the bit of wildlife photography. Yeah, your best day ever. It was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It just did quite well, that video. Yeah. In fact, it kind of almost justifies getting a new lens you know, for my birthday coming up in the summer. Well, you haven't even used the new camera I got you. Well, I just haven't found the right, you know, the right subject matter for it, you know. Well, maybe if you use it today, maybe I'll think about getting you that new lens for your birthday. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. And how many megapixels does it go? Mm, two. What about uh, dynamic range? How many stops of dynamic range does it have? I don't think there's any. Oh, <laughs> well, this should be good. This should be, this should be a good video. You know, I'm getting through a lot of flip-flops. Is that what I'm smelling right now? Well, it's because I put the warm air on. It's, it's blowing hot air onto my uh, Sarsen's flip-flops. I'm offended. I am too. You know, maybe it would be good if you could get a flip-flop company, because you kind of go through them about every two weeks, it seems. What, you mean a sponsorship? Yeah. That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching... Uh, anybody <laughs> get in touch because I go through about five pairs a year due to the foulness of the odour that, that you know accumulates over time you know what with standing in rivers and the ocean and boggy marshes it, it, it gets a bit pungent I'm not gonna lie so yeah that'd be good if I could get some, uh, some free flip-flops I would be a lot happier yeah yeah what's the average uh, lifespan of a, a pair of flip-flops before they turn evil on you or on me <laughs> both i think mine last a little bit longer because I, I wash my feet in between my smelly experiences but yeah. you i would say within a month and a half no i'll give it three months then then they're ripe well lately these ones have been like i smelled them really bad two weeks ago and they're still going <laughs> Well, I haven't got a replacement yet, you know. So, don't get in touch. <laughs> Please. Please get in touch. <laughs> There's nothing quite like a day at the beach with a slight chance of crippling pain or even death. As tempting as these frigid waters might be, neither of us was planning on going for a dip. So my struggle with this time of year, especially here in Nova Scotia, is that it's, it's not the prettiest because you don't have the greens of the summer, you don't have the yellows and oranges of the autumn, and then you don't have any snow. So spring's kind of ugly and brown. brown. Yeah. So there's not really that much to photograph at the moment. It, it's slim pickings, I'm not gonna lie. But we can't travel anywhere yet because we're doing this renovation. So we're kind of stuck here until that's done. But I think in a few weeks, everything will green up. So today, I've come to the beach because we were walking in here last week, I think, and we spotted these absolutely stunning sand patterns. Looked like tree forests in the sand. So I thought, let's come back on a, on a low tide day and get some shots, and uh, clearly it's not low tide. <laughs> we'll walk a little bit further on and see if any of these patterns emerge. If not, we, uh, we'll have to go and kill some time and then come back later at low tide. Yeah, we'll find a way to use your new camera. Yeah. So this gives you a rough idea of the kind of thing I'm after, but this is nowhere near as interesting as the stuff we saw last week. But you get the idea of what happens here. And I think to get the particular shapes that I'm after, those tree shapes, I think all of this, this water in the sand has to just get slowly sucked out back out to sea and then the patterns change and also depending on what's on the beach like these rocks you know they change around rocks 
shells, whatever's on the beach. So I think it could take time for those interesting shapes to form, but we'll try a little bit further and see what we can find. No use for the camera just yet, love. I see why you came here. Nah, honestly, spring is just a terrible time for landscape photography in Canada. I was desperate for anything to shoot as we plodded along the beach, finding nothing but kelp trash, but at least no deadly stinging jellyfish. So that's nice. Well, we've been trudging up down this uh, beach for about 20 minutes and it's not looking good. I, I don't see any interesting shapes worthy of getting out the camera. Certainly nothing on the same level as last time we were here. I don't know, this might be a, this might be a dead loss. But we'll go to the end of the beach and then come back, look at it from the opposite direction. You never know, something might pop out. Or maybe there'll be like a, a washed up swordfish or something like that. Or a lobster. Mm, yeah. This beach was about as interesting as a Thomas Heaton monologue. Thankfully, he doesn't watch my videos and therefore won't be able to embarrass me about my pathetic two megapixels. Well, this is officially rubbish. I'm not getting anything. And we've driven three hours for this. I, I, I gambled and I, I lost. So maybe we'll just spend the night and come back tomorrow. Are you ready? Yeah. This is tomorrow. It's worse. <laughs> and the weather too. We'll come again next week. Day three. It's a beautiful day, but there is no sand patterns. Gorgeous and foggy. Look at this. This fog. Beautiful light, but no sand. And I think the reason why there isn't any is because yesterday it was such a downpour with the rain that the floor looks like this. This is the sand now, it's just, it's kind of covered in this gravel. So I suspect that the rain just pushed all the gravel down towards the ocean and that's why it looks horrendous. So no sand patterns, third day. I think 10 times is the charm at this place. I, I think so, yeah. I think, I think 10 days, 10 revisits to the beach and then I'd get a shot. It's, it's day four. Uh, I did want to quit yesterday, but I didn't. I came back again for a fourth try. And lo and behold, the conditions are absolutely gorgeous today. I've seen loads of sand patterns. So I'm just gonna get my camera out and get stuck in. Which camera? Yeah, I was actually quite optimistic now. Time to just grab my camera and see what I could, oh, oh. Uh, that. Ugh. Well, at least it's got an L bracket. Yeah, it can't be that bad, can it? <laughs> can it? Ugh, look how happy she is. Well, if using this piece of sh gets me a telephoto lens, then I'll, I'll give it a go. I mean, <laughs> it looks good anyway. Now, this camera does not have a digital level, or for that matter, any usable features at all. Alright, all right, so how do I turn this thing on then? That one there? Yeah. Alright. Alright, so this is, uh, what, how many megapixels did you say? Two. Two. Two, two megapixels. Uh, no dynamic range. Um, and what, what's the focal length? What you're looking at. <laughs> well, you could say that about any camera and lens, but... All right, so I'll talk you through my idea and, we'll, uh, and then I'll show you the back of the camera and show you this, this composition I've framed up. Um, message to Sony, I'm really sorry about this. I mean, you, you don't pay me to mention your brand. In fact, you, you don't even give me freebies. You don't even give me any kind of recognition at all. <laughs> so I don't know why I should feel bad, but anyway, this is, uh, this is my new camera system. So I guess we're done. <laughs> Right, I'll show you what I've framed up. What, have you got a telephoto for this? I'm not sure this is going to work with this focal length. Yeah, this was recommended. Gets in real tight, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, what I really love about this composition, if you look at the bottom of the frame, I love that light patch of sand, which kind of gives these sort of tree forms in the sand a bit of a base. And then really with this shot, all I've done is I've just kind of centralized all of these tree shapes 
as they flow off into the distance and it's as simple as it gets but the problem I've got now I don't know if you can see it in the background but the waves are just coming in and pretty much destroying these tree shapes but I'm gonna to have to be quick about this and, and try and get the shot before they well they're either gonna get destroyed or enhanced I can't quite decide uh, once the water kind of sucks back out it, it's pretty much the same as it was a few minutes ago but it is gonna change constantly so that's what I've done with this composition just a dead simple centralized shot trying to capitalize on these tree forms but I can see lots of others all around me so I'm going to get this shot first and then move on to another one which is really obvious in fact I'll just show you before it gets wiped out I really like this one here I don't know if you can see this so it's this sort of I'll go to, off to the side so you can see the light hitting it it's this tree form here that's built around this little pebble this little rock so I kind of like that My challenge is I, I walk through the sand and I find a beautiful shape and then look at this the, the wave just comes in and destroys it uh, you know it might be okay for five minutes and then gone or it might last 20 seconds and then and then gone so it's it's quite frustrating you know you find these comps beautiful comps and then it's gone by the time you focus but I'll keep trudging on it's a little bit challenging with this uh, camera but I'm sure I'm sure I'll find something that's mediocre I was not having much luck as soon as I found gold it was washed away all right I'm getting really frustrated now because the last two shots that I just framed up just got washed out and I got beautiful compositions just washed out by a wave so clearly faffing around with a tripod it's not gonna work so I'm just gonna go handheld and just shoot really quick in those little gaps in between the waves and then I think I might get a shot but it's, it's very frustrating I've got to be honest with you well Amanda has gone back to the car because uh, she got cold <laughs> what a shocker who could have predicted that but uh, anyway now that she's disappeared I, I just felt a compulsion to put that monstrosity back in a camera bag and get me Sony camera out you know uh, just a compulsion just just to make life a little bit less torturous so I mean I don't know how long she's gonna be but I might have 20 minutes to get a good shot now so I'm, I'm gonna go back down the opposite direction where I started because I feel like the patterns were a bit better then and now that I've got my uh, trusty A1 I think I might be able to get a better shot I definitely some better video oh atrocious My oh what? jellyfish right yeah now periodically the Sun pops out and it's both challenging and complementary to some of these sand shapes because obviously I get a lot more contrast and there's a bit of edge light on the edges of the sand patterns but then if you hit it at the wrong angle it's all just glare and uh, I, I could cut that down with the polarizer but then you're kind of losing the whole point of that contrast so it's tricky and then if you get too close to the sand 
well then your own reflection shows up so you do get better dynamics more contrast but it's a lot more tricky than when it's just soft and overcast either way i think oh <laughs> hello wave i think i'm probably gonna have to do quite a bit of uh post-production and, and and contrast enhancement just to get these to work in that one wave let's just turn this around that one wave just wiped out every single sand pattern on the beach in both directions so now it's a reset <laughs> who would have thought that just trying to get a few boring sand patterns would be the most difficult shoot of my entire career well the waves are just horrendous now so i think i think that's it i don't think there's any more chance of me getting anything half mediocre so let's get these crappers into photoshop and see if i can polish a turd and get something half mediocre all right i think i might have been a little bit harsh on myself there it's definitely not a turd i actually quite like this shot Perhaps might not win any photography awards, but it, it's not a bad filler for a YouTube video. So this is Photoshop, and what you're looking at here is a somewhat processed image, uh, which I did a little bit of uh, Adobe Camera Raw tweaks. But the reason why I wanted to add this little part to the video is because I'm going to show you how I would burn parts of this image to accentuate these interesting shapes so the first thing i want to do is go down here to my layers panel and i'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer and you can see the settings up here i'm not actually going to do anything with those all i'm going to do is change the blend mode for normal to multiply you can see that makes it everything a lot darker but i'm just going to turn the opacity down to about let's say let's say about there so let's now switch that exposure adjustment layer off and then on just to see the difference that it's made and you can see it's made everything a little bit darker now that's going to work in these areas these these rivulets if you want to call them these just the patterns of the of the, the tree shapes in this uh, in this sand but not everywhere else i just want it there so what i'm going to do with this layer it's highlighted you can see it's in light gray on my keyboard i'm going to press Control i to invert that layer then i'm going to get my brush tool make sure it's a white brush you can see by this circle it's a little bit massive so let's let's get it a bit smaller let's get it down to about there and then i'm just going to zoom in with alt and then my wheel on the uh, mouse and i'm just going to brush in the areas where i'd like this to be darker hold down my space key drag that around and i can use my left bracket key just to make this a little bit smaller and I'm just going to spend, I don't know, a few minutes, which I may speed up due to the, the tedium factor on this video, just so that you don't have to watch me do all of this boring burning. Oh, you might, you might like it. Maybe you don't find it boring. But all I'm doing is I'm just making my brush bigger or smaller and just going into these already shadow areas. So let's get that a bit smaller there just to accentuate the lines that already exist so that they're a bit more exaggerated. And what I'll do now, just to kind of show you what's going on, is I'll just press Control zero to zoom out. So you can see now that that's very, very aggressive. So I switch that off and then switch that on. We're not too worried at this stage about it being over the top because we're gonna change that afterwards. And you can see where it kind of fades off down here. So here's a little trick I'll show you in a, in a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna keep going. Just wanna go over the top first and then we'll just dial things back afterwards. So it does look a bit silly at the moment, but don't, don't worry, we're, we're gonna fix that. So let's zoom in a little bit here these smaller brushes so it's these it's these little lines here that make it look like tree branches so these are actually quite important to accentuate so i'm not going to overlook these now obviously i'm doing this on a sand pattern photograph you could do this on any kind of image it doesn't matter whether it's a landscape or portrait or whatever this is this is basically the, the burning part of what people call dodging and burning i'm just making an area of my image slightly darker and then i'll show you how i uh, blend that so that it's not over the top I, I don't know how much of this to talk through maybe i should just hit fast forward and then uh, the, the tedium factor will be greatly reduced <laughs>
All right, so I've finished with that part of this process. That, that, that was quite relaxing. It's quite enjoyable watching someone do some uh, some painting, even if it is just, just digital. So obviously that is way over the top. If I switch this off, uh, that's the natural state. Put that back on. That's the completely unnatural state. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna make this a little bit more subtle. But the first thing that we need to do is fade off the bottom half of these trees because if you look at the the sort of natural look, that's kind of what it does. It seems darker at the top of these shapes, and then those shadows fade off. So let's go back to this exposure adjustment layer. We'll switch this brush from white to black and just increase the size of the brush with the right bracket key to be about about there. And I'll just zoom out a little bit so that I can come at this from outside of the frame. So I'm just going to erase some of that with this black brush. And there you go. That's fixed to that sort of unnatural taper for a bit more of a pleasing taper, or you, or you could call it a gradient. And now what we want to do is just turn down the opacity on this adjustment layer to make it less extreme. We want it to be just visible. So let's switch that off and then back on. Oh yes, I like that. So off and then on. And th this is what I do with pretty much every image that I do and you're kind of dodging and burning on. I'm constantly switching off the adjustment that I made and switching it back on just to try and get a little bit of an objective view as to whether or not I have overcooked it. And I would say that that is just about right. Now, if you want to learn more Photoshop tricks like this, check out my courses, Photoshop for Morons Volume 1 and Photoshop for Morons Volume 2. There's a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tickle my bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.